In today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about protection magic. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I hope that you are well. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about protection magic, finally. This is a video I've been wanting to make for years, but I was kind of, I'm ignoring, there are so many videos on protection magic. Does anyone need another one? And then there are more and more all the time. And I just thought, well, I'm gonna make a cleansing video because I feel like that's really, really important before you talk about protection because the two go hand in hand and it's really, really important. It's really key. And I did two cleansing magic videos last year. So there's a video on cleansing in general and then there's a video with an actual ultra cleansing wash that I shared. Those are on the channel, those are from last year. But not only are there so many of the protection videos already online and available, there's so much information. Most people know the best books to read and it's just such a rudimentary practice, really a basic kind of topic. On my channel, I tend to lean towards more experiential, so I'm sharing as I go along, but also sharing what I've learned over the years and how my practice has changed and hope that that sort of helps in a way. But this is still something I feel is so, so important and I want to just add a few things that may not have been said in some other videos. I think that pretty much all the protection techniques have been talked about other than, and this is the point, what you are going to bring to it. Because I really feel that a cornerstone of a witch's magic being successful and effective and efficient is really the witch's ability to be creative and to be secure and confident in their abilities to really know themselves inside and out, and that's, you know, they say witch, know thyself, obviously, is one of the tenets from the Oracle of Delphi, but also it's within the witch's pyramid, and the witch's pyramid consists of four tenants, to know, to dare, to will, to be silent. And these four tenants make up the witch's pyramid, and these derive from Transcendental Magic by Eliphas Levi. These tenants are very, very old, and they are the basis, right? So it sounds like I'm going into quite a lot of depth at the beginning about stuff that's not relevant, but it is, because these are really, really important things to remember if you're going to have an effective practice and for your practice to be effective, it has to be personalized and you have to be confident in your ability. It doesn't matter if you have other parts of your life that you're not feeling confident with, you have to be confident in your ability to be able to perform effective magic for that magic to be effective and efficient. And that's really, really the key. But also the creativity is so important as well. There are so many things that are never gonna be said in a 101 magic video because it's going to come from the practitioner themselves. There are so many different ways to do things. You are gonna bring the magic that is unlike anyone else to your work. So it comes from, you could use the word intuition. So you follow your intuition. It comes from a connection to spirits as well as a connection to yourself and your own spirit, which is massively overlooked. I think that it's really, really important to bring it back to that. I see so much in the community of people looking to others to tell them what their practice should be and how they should do this, that, and the other. And they almost, even if they don't want people to do the stuff for them, they really want someone to just tell them, okay, this, 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 and this, and this. Okay, that might work for a little bit of time, but if you're going to have a, a magical practice that is gonna last you for years, you are going to need to develop your own way of practicing. And the only way you can do that is to actually practice. So to read, learn, by listening to others, joining a coven, gathering as much information as you can and testing that information and then trying something new. I think a lot of people that are actually drawn to this and that end up continuing with it are people who find that they were doing things like that from the get-go when they were really little without really knowing. Putting little charms together from sticks and stones, putting little treasure bags together, speaking to spirits and such when they were children. These are things that are already in the heart of the witch and I'm not saying that you can't cultivate a successful witchcraft practice if you didn't do those things when you were younger. Of course you can, but it needs to be rooted within yourself for it to be effective. And so I really just want to say, before I even go into any of the stuff I'm gonna talk about, that this is the key. And really, creativity, all of the tenants, know thyself especially, following your intuition, following your heart, your gut, and just knowing yourself so well and respecting your spirit as well, working with your spirit, not just other spirits, deities, ancestors, land spirits and plant spirits, human or non-human spirits. I think it's just so, so key. So I really wanted to say that first because there is not gonna be a protection 
charm or spell or ritual that you can read in a book that is going to be more effective than the one you do for yourself and the one that you write yourself and you can be inspired by a number of people and you can listen to what I'm going to say, you can listen to other people talking about it, you can read lots of books about protection magic, you can read folk charm books, try this, that and the other but until you make it yours it's not going to have the oomph that it could have and that's what I really really want to make clear so that this is really accessible to you so that you actually feel that you have the tools that you can go out and just start to explore because it has to have meaning for you and there are some things that just don't resonate for some people and that's fine I think it should go without saying but if you are part of a particular tradition where things need to be done a certain way and you are part of a group or a coven that obviously needs to be respected if you're part of a closed tradition and things are done a certain way that needs to be respected and secrecy etc needs to be upheld so now I've had that little spiel, what is protection magic? Protection magic is essentially magic that you use to protect yourself, a space, an item, a group of people, and there are a number of different techniques, charms and items that you can use in your practice to create, sustain, and maintain, and build upon these protection magic practices. I do want to make a video that is about shielding and warding your personal self. I will touch on it a little bit, but before we go into it, I just want to say that I probably will be doing another video that's just about personal protection, how to build those and to have them be effective for you. So why is protection magic important? It goes without saying that people want protection in everyday lives, even who aren't magical practitioners. It's just important to protect yourself so in the same way that you live in a house and you lock the doors when you leave or you lock the doors at night and you make sure that you close your windows and you're secure in your home, the same way that you would wear a helmet if you're riding a bike or you'd strap your seatbelt in in the car, you're taking all those precautions because that's what's really important in order to be safe doing those things. You know, you look both ways when you're crossing the street. These are things that everybody does to stay safe and protected. Just because someone doesn't work with spirits or have a magical practice doesn't mean that they might not one day encounter spirits and not even realize it or realize it. They might still go to a place where there is sort of spiritual activity occurring. So even if the person is not aware of it or not open to it, those things are still happening. But if you are a magical practitioner, you're interested in things like the occult, tarot, any form of divination, witchcraft, magic, working with spirits, working with demons, working with angels, the new age community, any of these things, you are like a shiny bright light. You open yourself up, even just by reading more, you open yourself up more. And it is something that some people can switch off or switch on and dial up and dial down. Matt Oren actually talks about a way that you can work to do this in his book Psychic Witch. It's a book that I absolutely adore, I recommend all the time, read it a few years ago and I've got notes all over it. It's got so many exercises and it. it's a really fantastic book for beginners because it teaches you a lot about energetics and how to work on your mind using visualisation and strengthening those psychic skills that you can use for clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairvoyance knowing, psychic knowing, clairsentience, clair feeling, and everyone can utilize their psychic abilities. But it's something that comes naturally to some people and other people have to work at it a little bit more, but it's like a muscle. As you're exercising it, it kind of builds that strength and resilience. And some people really struggle with envisioning things. So a way around that is to think about the sensations that you can imagine. So I do like to do both. It is a common misconception, of course, that to practice magic, you need to have a lot of stuff and a lot of tools, herbs and crystals, and that's just not true. It's lovely to have those things. You don't need all of that stuff. You just need yourself and your body, your mind, and you need to be connected to yourself. That's why a book like Psychic Quick is so great to start with because it takes just you, really. There's nothing else you need. I mean, I think there's a spell where you might need some water or something, but it's all about what's going on in your brain and in your spirit and what you're seeing, what you're picking up on and perceiving from the world or whatever it is you're working with. That's a really great place to start. And just to remember that there's a lot that you can do just in your mind if you have nothing else. The more and more you build up your knowledge, you will start to work with things. You will learn more about herbs and such, and you will know certain things are good for this and better for this. Or, But then also if you're cultivating a connection with certain botanicals, certain herbs, certain trees, then those spirits will be able to work with you so much more than a plant that is so amazing for protection magic according to whatever book or whatever YouTuber or whatever TikToker, but you can only get it from across the other side of the world and you get it to you. It's not going to have the same potency if you've spent 
you know, six months, nine months, two years working with something like nettles or working with brambles or working with roses, working with thistles and thorns or whatever is local to you, whatever you can get really, really easily. So again, I talk about this quite a lot, but working with your land, connecting with what's with you and building your own correspondences based on interacting with that plant and connecting to the plant spirit. So it's important that we are protected to keep ourselves safe, our families safe and those who live in our home, right? So our animals and any dependents, etc. And it's also important that we keep our home safe as well so that our space is our own and we don't face attacks. It's obvious. This is why we need to have this protection in place and as magical practitioners, we are drawing attention literally from more than someone who is not. So potentially some kinds of spirits who might be a little bit mischievous or whatever might be drawn to you. But that's not to say that you need to be worried, it's just to have your precautions. It's much better to be prepared and to be working magic to protect yourself than to be having to react in a fearful way to something negative that's happening to you. Respond in that way, that is obviously, you know, something that may need to happen, but it's it's much better to have your protections in place and to have something that you're using as a protection charm break or a witch's bottle shatter or something like that. And then you know that something's not quite or something needs to be replaced, etc. So that's really, really key. Another thing to mention is, of course, how important it is to be doing your cleansing. So obviously I mentioned the video last year that I made about cleansing and I wanted to make that first because it's so important that you are cleansing your space before you do any kinds of protection. And it might be a cyclical thing, so I talked about daily, weekly kind of cleanses that you can do, but then also bigger cleanses that you might want to do in that video. They go hand in hand, they really, really do, because after you've cleansed, you want to fill the space up with something and you want to put protections up. So it's really, really important. And if you find that there's something else going on in your space, there's some lingering energy, there's something negative that someone's brought in, or there is some kind of spirit, like just stuff is going on, then you are really going to want to banish that out of the space as well as the cleanser you're going to want to do a cleanse a banish a cleanse again just get it all out with the windows open you know get it all out and then you're going to want to build your protections up because what you want to do is keep yourself and your space fortified and protected so that those things stay out but if something's already inside you don't just want to put up protections because that will just keep <laughs> that energy lingering in your space and if there's a spirit as well it could just make it worse so you really really want to be sure that you are getting rid of anything that is lingering that is residual before you build up your protections and your wards etc so that's why it's really really important to be doing those cleanses but more than that as well, you need to make sure that your space is actually physically clean because it's so often done where people will be doing their spiritual cleansing but they're not actually cleaning their house. I know some people will clean their house every day, other people don't do it for a few months, some people do it every month. I clean my house top to toe every week and it sounds like a lot and it is a lot, it takes half a Saturday but I like to live that way because it makes me feel better. So all of the sides are dusted, the floors are all hoovered, the hard floors are hoovered and and then on my hands and knees, I use a cloth and water and a wash and I, I wash everything down. There are things like the windows, which I don't do every week, but I do the cupboard doors, the handles, all things like that, like really, really important. And cleansing mirrors and things as well in your space. I don't follow TikTok, but as I understand, there's been quite a lot of talk about mirrors being portals and stuff. And I've never really had to lock a mirror before, but if you wanted to, you can. But I do definitely cleanse my mirrors and I always have, so maybe that's why. And I like a mirror on my altar space, and I've talked about this before, because I do a lot of mirror work in my practice. So it's already a safe space for me and it's already imbued with magic, so maybe that's another reason why it's already been like that. That's just something to note. But you want to be really, really mindful that there's not like a film of dust over everything and then you're just smoke cleansing around it because dust is so easy for spirits and energies to stick to because dust is literally your skin, right? And what's in the air? It's you. <laughs> if something's coming for you, I mean, it's going to cling to that and yeah, it might not be getting you. It's in your space, right? Again, with the plants, you often hear people saying that the plant will be the first to wilt and die. The plant will experience what you experience, especially if you are charming a plant to be protected for you. The plant may start to become ill if there's something lingering in your space. I've read as well people experiencing that their animals will get sick before them and that's something that can happen and that's really really awful thing to think so you really would just 
want to avoid that at all costs because you're attached to that animal. So to have a witch bottle in place as a decoy is such an important thing. <laughs> so again, that's another thing. And a lot of people say that you might want a new witch bottle as well when you move from house to house, like a witch's broom, etc. So those are things to take into consideration as well. So making sure that your space is physically clean and then doing the spiritual cleansing is so key, so important. I can't stress it enough. You must keep on top of it. It's boring, I know. There are ways as well that you can make physical cleansing more fun. And that's by using floor washes and floor powders and hoovering them up and things like that to make things a little bit witchier in your space or using a, a rim spray, etc. But again, I would still call these your spiritual cleansing, really. I just like to tack on some spiritual cleansing at the end of my physical cleansing session and it's just done. But I will definitely link those cleansing videos because you need to go see them if it's something that is new to you, you know, and potentially as well, even if you are a seasoned practitioner, you might pick up something else that you've not thought of. So do go over and watch those. There is another thing I wanted to mention about the cleansing that I did mention in that video, but just in case you're not seeing that or you haven't seen it, it is really important as well that if you are cleansing out your space, say you're getting rid of some kind of residual energy because there was an argument or there was some sort of unpleasant feeling when someone left or something along those lines, you will want to get rid of that, but then also fill the space up again, not only with the protection, but like a specific intention. It doesn't have to be anything big, but it can be just for blessings and protection in your space. In addition to the specific protection charms, spells and wards, shields I have up around my space and my house. I also have aspects of spells, charms that are going to bring in blessings for us as well because that's really really important. I have a family, I have a husband and two small kids and it's just really really important that things continue to tick over in the way that we are used to, in the way that we need, you know, that, that our health, happiness, work, home life, it continues to be prosperous and abundant in terms of everything that we need. We need to be able to pay our bills and to be comfortable, essentially that's what it is, it's for a level of comfort. Another reason for the protection magic is not only the literal protection that you need to keep yourself safe, but it's also the peace of mind, because it does wonders to know that you are doing these things, you are taking these protective measures. It's a very satisfying, reassuring thing to have going on. I would really highly recommend that you have a handful of protective charms, spells, wards, shields, etc. set up for yourself around your space as well as your personal wards. But we will, again, as I said, talk about that at another time. So let's start by talking about ways in which you can build up energy that is protective in your space. I want to start with the kind of ritual or spell that you can perform again and again and sort of refresh. And you might wish to do this at the dark moon, for instance, or the new moon is a good time for renewing those kinds of things. Or even once a quarter or so, you may wish to do a protection ritual something that is a statement within a space that is safe and sacred that you can then send out and expand to surround yourself and your home and your family and it can penetrate the walls and sort of sit like a bubble outside of your home and you can do this with any kind of spell that you want and a really popular one is of course a candle magic spell of course with candle magic you can anoint with oils you can utilize herbs either on or around the candle or inside the candle you can write your intention very clearly in the affirmative present so I am protected, my house is protected, my home is protected, my home and my family are protected, something along those lines, you know, and you can distill it down into a sigil of your own, or you can create a bind rune, or you can use a rune, or an oem stave, any of those things that speak to you, you can carve that into a candle. Essential oils, as I said, the herbs, make the candle your own, make the spell your own, speak words of intention over the candle and really build up your energy. Now, I'm not talking about casting circles or creating a safe space or doing a compass round or anything like that in this video because it would take so long and I would need to go into that on other videos. There are loads of videos on those again, so I'm not gonna bore you with that now, but that goes without saying, you want to have a cleansed space first, you want to prepare your space in the way that you see fit, you know, if you wish to cast a circle, if you wish to pull the quarters, if you wish to do a compass round, if you wish to do any of those things, the lesser banishing ritual, the pentagram, whatever, you do those things and then in your space you can perform a ritual of your own choosing and it's really lovely to write your own chant or spell or charm, warding charm that 
builds up energy and then you can gather the energy together you're building the energy up building it building it, building it as you chant your personal protective chant and this is something that you can do every few months or as i said you can do it with whatever frequency you want you visualize that energy building that protective energy building and then just spreading out as it releases and then encompassing and encasing your home and that is just a really really basic way that you can kind of tick over with a protective spell ritual within whatever other magic you've got going on of course if you feel like there's something specific going on you could always use a tarot spread divination to find out a little bit more about what is going on but that's quite a specific thing that you would be doing and you would want to do that before of course you can also build energy within that working with a drum or music that's recorded or chanting as i said whatever you have if you are more of a traditional witchcraft practitioner you may have a stang or a staff you may wish to beat that onto the floor to build up the momentum etc quite a lot of traditional witches work outdoors so they may not work so much inside their space but they still want to protect their space right so that's something that they can do at home i'm not going to be talking so much about lots of correspondences in this video because there are loads but of course for protection a black candle is perfect if you have nothing else obviously a white candle you can even use a tea light you don't need lots and lots of stuff obviously as well you may want to incorporate symbols i talked about sigils and runes etc but symbols i've touched on those in my jewelry charming video i talked about the evil eye in that video as well so you may wish to watch a little bit of that but there are a plethora of course of protective symbols from many different cultures that are known and well used the energy is within them there is so much potency to be had by utilizing one of those symbols so don't think that just because oh every witch uses a pentagram or every wiccan wears a pentagram necklace that that's not something that you should do you wear an eye of ra or whatever if that is meaningful for you if you work with a specific pantheon and there is a specific symbol thor's hammer if you work with norse deity etc there are so many ways in which you can utilize symbols that are popular and well used within your spell work and ritual and to put on your, your person as well and again that comes into personal warding and shielding but it's still important to mention because you can literally use it in your space so with your sigils or with your pentagram or your pentacle or whatever symbol it is you're using you can anoint your finger with oil obviously be cleansed first and cleanse your space but you can anoint your finger with a certain protective oil and you can literally draw that protective symbol in the space for yourself i've done this over my windows just do it in the space so protective symbols are a really, really easy way to put some protection charms in your home. And again, you can use them in any way, shape or form. You may wish to pop some protection charms in the corners of your land, for instance. In our old house, I took a bunch of tiny little quartz crystals and enchanted them and buried them all around my property. And it really worked. <laughs> I mean, it did wonders. And we were backed onto a field and prior to that a cow kept breaking down our fence and coming through but after that didn't <laughs> just little things i mean the cow was lovely bless them but yeah our fence and our chair broke little things like that that you can do obviously crystals there are so many crystals that are protective i'm not going to go into all of them again if you want to check out a crystal book i really recommend love is in the earth it's a kaleidoscope of crystals and it's a really really beautiful book quite an old book so many protective crystals but of course you can go with obsidian black tourmaline jet hematite smoky quartz and then other crystals that i really like to use for other forms of protection like tiger's eye, carnelian, they're quite fiery and quite energetic. There are so many different ways that you can program a crystal as well, so if all you have is a clear quartz, you can use that. I have so many rocks, stones, pebbles that I've picked up at beaches and forests. I will just say in some beaches you're not allowed to take, so you have to check that. I've charmed sticks as well as rocks, bark, moss, acorns for protective measures, pine cones. I carry certain rocks in my bag. I literally carry around rocks as a protective charm. So you can make a protective charm amulet out of anything. Don't discount those. And of course, if you are lucky enough to find a hag stone or anything like that, which is a stone with a natural board hole within the middle of it. So that's usually caused by water eroding the rock. I have one here, which is really fabulous. 
So these are fantastic to collect. And if you have a few of these, you can also make a witch's ladder with them. You can also incorporate knots and have a protective charm. There's a very famous witch's ladder knot spell. By knot of one, the spell has begun and it goes on. You can use feathers and beads, charms, whatever speaks to you. You could use dried herbs as well. Hang those. That can be a protective amulet. You can craft your own protective amulet out of anything that you feel will be able to be powerful for you in that way. Sometimes you just stumble upon a rock or one is right there. I have a lot of crow feathers that I've discovered over the years since working with Morrigan. I've been working with the Morrigan for about five years now. I have come across so many black feathers, I have them in every room basically, and they are protective and they are charmed with the Morrigan and they do their job, let me tell you. And today I was out in the woods with my son and we found maybe six we only took home two but there was one that was stuck in the earth just stood up like this and i walked right past it i didn't even see it and my son was like mummy mummy look it was so weird i thought oh, this is strange i didn't know how it got there maybe someone had put it like that into the earth it was very much needing to be picked up and i also noticed that there are more and more black feathers whenever the morrigan is close or working really closely with me as well. So that is something that is just so interesting. You can use herbs, feathers, sticks, stones, roots, bones, of course bones, acorns, pine cones, rocks, stones, pebbles. I would say that you probably want something that is natural rather than man-made rock that is like in someone's yard. Of course, there is a caveat to this, and that is if you have, say, a little figure or a doll or some kind of mascot that you want to be like a protective charm or guardian over your space and of course crystals as well but you don't have to spend a fortune so other forms of protection of course salt is protective however it's not something that you want to be pouring onto the earth because it actually kills the grass it's bad for the land it's really really bad for wildlife so you just want to avoid doing that however you can use things like seeds to be protective and to bring in blessings and you can kind of charm them to do dual action. So you could plant a bunch of kind of protective herbs around the vicinity of your home. With salt, instead of putting it on the earth, what you can do is put it in a cleansing powder that you create with herbs. Then you can sweep it up and wash the floor after that. That will leave things squeaky clean. There's also a floor wash that is quite traditional that includes urine, which is highly potent because it's literally you. But I would probably not go that far. Although you can use something like ammonia, which is often used in spiritual baths. I actually wouldn't use that. For spiritual baths, cleansing and protective spiritual baths, I tend to use things like hyssop and rue, and then whatever else I have that I feel I need to use at that time. But that's something you can do, of course, salt across the front door or the back door and liminal spaces as well. It's really, really important to protect because that's where you have spirits crossing potentially or where you have that open space, right, where they would cross over. When you think about vampire lore in popular culture, there's always that idea that if you invite them in, then they can always come in. So it's just keeping that in your mind, not that you are inviting vampires into your space, but it's just an interesting thing to keep in mind when you are protecting your space. I I also have things like witches bells and charms that dingle and such hanging up in various spaces. Later in the video I do talk about protective horseshoe charms from folklore and I have one of these hanging up in the foyer of my house. I also have some other protections going on and I did forget to mention in this video the satyr square which again is an old folk charm which is used for protection and I've used this in a multitude of applications in my practice and I have one at my front door to protect that area of my house. If you go and watch my recent vlog, you will see some footage of that as well. Spaces and also you can keep a crystal above the door or beside the front door, a crystal like selenite. You can imbue it with your intention for it to cleanse the space as people walk in and out. So it will literally just neutralize any of that energy that is residual or that's not so, that you don't want in your house when someone comes in so that when they leave, then that's gone, goodbye. Thank you very much. 
something like a rosemary is very protective and I will talk more about herbs in a bit but that's a really lovely thing that you can have around the vicinity of your house or your borders. You can have brambles, you have roses, really really highly protective and of course Practical Magic is one of my favourite and they always say you know plant rosemary by the door. It's just something that is, is actually really true. <laughs> I love that. There are so many herbs that you can use. I love using cedar, sage from the garden, not white sage. I like to use thyme as well, there's oregano, there's so many easy to get herbs and plants. I work quite closely with nettles because we have a lot of nettles and I just love them and I make a tincture out of nettles and I find it so great for anxiety, it's perfect for allergies, I sometimes get a bit itchy in the heat so it's just absolutely perfect for me. I love my nettle tincture so much, it's just been so beautiful to work with. Don't worry about the stings because once the nettles are dry generally they're gone. If you wanted to do some protective kitchen witchery <laughs> you can literally whip up some protective magic in your kitchen with some nettle pesto and there's a recipe for this on my channel. You can make nettle soup, of course I think it's quite popular nettle and potato soup and you can also blanch your nettles and use them as like a salad and this on that note as well the blanching actually will remove the sting from the nettles so you don't necessarily have to worry about the stings if you want to consume them in a salad say the other thing i did not mention is that you know when you connect to plant spirits you're getting to know them and they're becoming allies for you in your work it can be really really nice to obviously connect to them first while they're living and then ask for permission to harvest them but then also with nettles it's really really nice to kind of offer yourself to be stung as an offering which is something that I really like to do it's actually proven to be really really good for you as well for your body to have those stings so I sort of look at it like that it is true most of the time that if you just go for it and grab with like confidence and like show no fear then also the stings won't impact you so much which is also mostly true although I have still sustained a few stings from that but I tend to sort of like to think of the nettles as receiving this gift of being able to sting me <laughs> Salad. and they're so good for you there's just so many vitamins and minerals there's a reason why they were in the nine herb charm and people used to consume the nettles because they came out of the land when people needed the nourishment they needed the vitamins and they are so amazing for vitamins and minerals and they are so good for you they used to give a tonic of nettles to people with scurvy to treat them literally get to know your plants that are around you there will be so many protective plant allies around you in your home and your space your land so get to know them that is just an amazing thing for you to do and roses as well cedar and brambles some of the most protective elements i work with of course the elder as well i absolutely love working with the elder for protection so there is blackthorn so many amazing protective trees if you want to learn more about those you look into the celtic tree oem you can learn a lot more about the trees within that they are trees that are within the british isles really but get to know your native trees and get to know any trees that aren't native but that have become part of your landscape so of course something really important to remember with any kind of magic is to make sure that you are doing the practical stuff as well as the magical stuff, right? So you can bring them together. Things like keys can be used as a charm, especially if they're like a skeleton key. Sometimes I just stumble across keys and this has started to happen since I started to kind of work a little bit more with Hecate. But that has kind of gone to the wayside a little bit now because it was starting to happen when the Morrigan was absent for a while. I felt Hecate's presence and it was a really different kind of connection but I started stumbling upon keys and charmed them for protective measures. So that's something that you can use as well. So of course we talked about symbols and then there's charms and amulets. Now I go into great depth about the difference between charms and amulets in my charming jewellery video, so you can go over and check that out. I would highly recommend that you do. In addition to symbols, of course you have different charms, folk charms, as well as amulets and talismans. And I do go into detail about the difference between amulets and talismans in that charming jewellery video, so do go over and watch that. An amulet is generally seen as something that you wear or carry as protection, whereas a talisman is something that is drawing something to you. That is the general consensus around that. And if you're interested, you haven't seen that other video and you're not planning to go and see it, I would highly recommend that you read Modern Magic by Donald Michael Craig, because in there it goes into detail about that. Also, highly recommend that you read Protection and Reversal Magic by Jason Miller. That is like the go-to protection magic book that I would recommend everybody read 
Jason is just the best for explaining all manner of things in such a easy to understand way and he's just fantastic. I love that book. There's also Christopher Penzak's Witch's Shield which is also very good but it comes at it from a slightly different perspective. It's less occult, more Wiccan based but still highly valuable to read. There are more book recommendations coming at the end of the video as well, so do stay tuned. We've talked about witches ladders, we've talked about witches bells, we've talked about crystals at the door, we've talked about symbols, we've talked about charms, we've talked about amulets, we've talked I forgot to mention the satyr square, which I will touch on again in a bit. We've talked about hagstones and the use of them within witches ladders and such. There is something else which is witches balls. I have one of these downstairs. I used to have another one that was gifted to me by my auntie and uncle years and years ago. Well, had it hanging up in our very first house when we lived in Buckinghamshire a long time ago. It was charmed for protection. Sun would hit it, it was beautiful, it had a little groove in it where you could put essential oils and it was just a lovely piece. It was purple. Unfortunately it broke in our house move so we moved to our second house. This is our third house now. It broke in that move and then for a long time I didn't have one and I felt kind of lost without it and I'd look for them everywhere. I really could not find one and then I actually did manage to find one that I really liked in Boz Castle last year. So I picked it up in in honour and in memory of my auntie who has now passed away sadly a few years ago. I feel her with me with that ball and it is protective and I have not hung it anywhere because I have two small children and I have two animals, a dog and a cat who are quite youthful and energetic and my cat climbs the curtains every day. I don't want it falling and breaking so I actually have it on a tray in the living room. The sphere radiates the protection from that and that is something that is really really powerful potent i feel it every day i charmed it for that reason and it has power behind it because i worked with a dearly departed loved one with that and that is something that is really really important and special to me there's of course folk charms like the rowan berries rowan berry charms rowan berry crosses i have one of those as well as i said you can make your own little charms with seashells and things like that just enchant everything make sure you cleanse and enchant and imbue your energy and as i say in so many of my videos i'm gonna do a video on this you feel the energy moving through your body moving through your hands you want to be grounded and center so you center your energy ground your energy feel your roots going into the earth i mean so many people talk about this it's so important though and then allow yourself to ground root neutralize any energy with mother earth and then bring back the energy from mother earth i usually ask to do this i visualize different colors so sometimes red or gray coming off me and then sometimes it's green or sometimes it's gold coming back and it's really really beautiful and healing so i allow that energy to permeate my body and then i bring it back to center and then I feel it through allow it to push through my hands I can feel it now you can feel it happening and I'm sure many of you have tried this I mean this is really going into basics of energetic works I need to talk about this in another video really but just quickly you know you can push the energy through your hands you can breathe it out through your mouth you can speak words of intention you really really need to work at imbuing your intention and pushing that energy towards that willing that into the object and then you will feel it and another thing that you can do is attach that to a battery that is charged by something like the full moon or even by the sun and you can enchant something to be charged to keep up that working to keep it feeling potent or you can continue to imbue it as and when and you can continue to do your rituals your candle rituals your spells whatever it is that you want to do but it's a really really amazing thing to set something so it gets charged by the sun or the moon those are really really easy things to use but you can also use things like laughter in the home you know and then we start to get into more creative stuff because then we're talking about things that you can create and control and things like services come into that as well because you can literally create a spirit yourself ask it to do what you want it to do many people have a spirit that they've created like a servitor that protects their home i have one of these myself my protective servitor is one that stays with me so resources on this there's only really one book that i've read that actually covers this and that's Condensed Chaos by Phil Hine and I do have a couple of others that I'm about to get into reading at some point this year hopefully about creating magical entities etc so I can share my thoughts on those books when I've read them but if you're interested there are also some great videos online as well as Phil Hine's book Condensed Chaos. One by Saturnarium a few years ago and of course one by Foolish Fish I would highly recommend that you go and watch Foolish Fish if you have not already and Saturnarium as well they are fantastic resources for this kind of magic and of course reading around chaos magic is going to be great for that kind of work if you want to branch out into that. I have experienced some quite rapid strong results from working with servitors so I would highly recommend that if you're at that 
point in your practice and yeah I definitely do feel protected. Another thing that you can do as well is ask your deity or your spirits that you work with or even your ancestors to protect you. You can see a veil coming over your space around your bed at night is a really really nice thing to do. We talked about a number of charms, it's also the horseshoe charm which is generally made out of iron and iron is supposed to be a protective against the fae particularly. If you're working with the fae specifically you can use other metals. I have a horseshoe and I used an old folk charm from Aidy Mercer's The Wicked Shadow K to install that and to charm that and that's working a charm. Honestly my space just feels a lot better since that was in place even though I had like a ton of other things going on as well so I always have energetic wards and shields and then there's my personal projections as well things like jewelry and those sorts of things the ongoing cleansing and protection rituals that I do and then there's also sigils and so I talked about sigils before and utilizing them with candles and things and of course you can put them on mirrors you can stir them into food you can put them on your face makeup and glamour magic is something that I love so glamour magic can definitely support your protection magic okay so you can like draw those in with your foundation or you can use eyeliner to draw it onto your body draw it like onto your wrist or somewhere that you don't want somewhere to see like on your ankle or on your foot you can also put them on your bottles on your shoes you can sew your sigil into your clothes if you are that way inclined there are so many things that you can do with a sigil but one thing that I found so highly effective I created a sigil a few years ago on a mirror and then I placed that in my windows and it's a tiny tiny mirror it's a very personal protective sigil and it literally is in the corner of my windows all around the house I also put it behind picture frames you can also put it behind mirrors if you wish you dot it around on the walls facing outwards you don't have to put it at the windows you can put them at the walls all around your space and that is also going to be protective another thing is herbs so I talked about herbs and plant spirits that you can connect to and work with on an ongoing basis for protection you can imbibe some of them like I'm imbibing my nettle but you can also hang herbs in a protective way you might be making an oil with protective herbs and I made a protection oil in my previous vlog which is a folk witches vlog so I did share that it's been working really fantastically it's a kind of catch-all but it has also some sort of trip wires within it as well I like to use that on my person as well as on candles etc and to anoint things around my home with but you can hang the same herbs that you might use in a oil like that or a room spray for instance if you work with water you, you might want to make a half alcohol half water or half glycerin half water that you might want to make a spray using dark moon water and include some essential oils that are protective like frankincense rosemary clary sage you go with what calls to you even lavender is highly protective rose of course as i said really fiercely protective you can create a spray that is personal to you for protection charge that obviously even put like some crystals that are safe in water like a quartz crystal within to amplify that something like black tourmaline is not safe in water and you just need to do your research with that but hanging herbs you can charm the herbs as you tie the knots around them so I have herbs hanging in a few of my rooms and I have some twine and when I tie them up I will charm them for whatever I want and hang them in my space and then another protective charm and also I obviously use the herbs as well so it's kind of a thing that goes around and circles around. Another thing that you can do is to create your own charm by taking a stone or a pebble that feels sacred and then painting a symbol on it and it can be like a personal charm for you. If you are into wood burning you can use that, you can again work with symbols, any bind room that you've created or sigils, whatever it is, and use those. Literally the world is your oyster with it. If you are connecting with plant spirits, you will likely be connecting with tree spirits as well and you can connect to the tree spirits on your land and around your neighbourhood and connect to those for protection as well. Spread out that protective barrier, you know, you can have layers. Another thing that I talked about in the charming video I think but I haven't really made a video of its own is layering and layering is so key and that's another reason why you want several of these things going on like at the same time. Layering your spell work, layering your protections, I layer my shields, my personal wards all the time so you can layer the shields around your home and your space so that you just have so many things going on. You're going to be notified as well and that's another thing that if you set something up to notify you that is something as well that you will get an awareness of something is going down before it goes down. You can do things like that with reading the candles if you do candle rituals you can see what happens to the wax and the wick. I had a weird experience where I did a protection candle and it kind of inverted on itself and I ended up burning the other end of it. Yeah, I think I know what happened there. So that, that was something that I basically redid that. 
you will also be feeling into things as well. So you will feel the energy of something. Many people say that you don't need to cleanse things like selenite. I tend to sort of waft smoke around everywhere and with the intention to cleanse everything in addition to the physical cleansing of course so that would be kind of taking care of that element of it i do see selenite as highly cleansing but i don't think anything is completely like obviously you don't cleanse selenite in the water that's just something just to but yeah so something like selenite if it feels like it needs a little bit of something even though it's selenite you know trust that i think that you want to follow your intuition and trust your intuitive hits and trust your psychic knowing as well if you get downloads if you get clear audience or clairvoyance whatever it is trust those so if something doesn't feel quite right trust that feeling and lean into that and see what that's all about so these are ways that you can get this understanding of things but also something like a witch's bottle or a crystal may break shatter this will give you an indication. Pieces of jewelry can break or shatter or tarnish as well. But you wanna keep an eye on these things and just keep topping them up. Things like salt bowls will absorb water, moisture, and when that's happened, you want to like renew them. I have salt bowls around my home. There's also folk and conjure charms around either using like a lemon cut up in water or in vinegar or onion cut up and put into different rooms around your home and allowing those to kind of turn. And it's actually so interesting how, you know, some rooms that have a lot of activity in them, it's so funny to see how those lemons or onions or whatever it is that you are using, they wilt or go rotten or they just dry out like much quicker. They just go really gnarly quicker. And you can also read that as well. So witches bottles are really, really really old forms of protective magic and originally witches bottles were made to protect the home and the people within the home from witches but obviously that's something that's been reclaimed and now of course we use it to protect ourselves and our homes. What was generally included within witches bottles varied greatly. If you are able to go and visit the Museum of Witchcraft and Magic in Bos Castle in the UK, those kinds of places you will see so many examples of apotropaic magic like this that is protective. It's just incredible. And then there's things like shoes stuffed up chimneys. It's just fascinating. So there is a book. This book is fantastic. This is Brian Hoggard's Magical House Protection. And Brian Hoggard is an academic, so this is written quite extensively. Half the book is all detailed accounts of different areas within the UK of counter witchcraft, essentially, and house protection. The Archaeology of Counter Witchcraft by Brian Hoggard. He's a historian. There are so many interesting accounts here, and I like looking into the ones that are in Devon and in the West Country, because that's where I am. But there's Buckinghamshire, which is where I used to live. In an early 17th century manor house in Buckinghamshire, there are various marks on the lintel of the fireplace, including spectacle marks and other marks on the staircase. A Bellamine witch bottle was recovered from a fireplace in Winslow, Buckinghamshire, reported by Farley in 1978. That's so funny. And then it goes on and on. There are so many details of protective apotropaic magical charms in here. There are witch's bottles in this as well. Essentially what was included in a witch's bottle were things like nails, rusty nails ideally, broken glass, the hair of the practitioner potentially, any kind of nasty herbs. There may have been petitions. Urine was very 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 common. Nowadays some people use urine, some people use something like ammonia. I mean I would always go with the actual thing. I'm not really fancying putting urine on my floor, but yeah, which is what's sort of kind of important. Some of them may have included other types of liquids, such as menstrual blood, a highly personalized protective charm. And what was important about including a bodily fluid was the tag lock of it because the reason why it was thought of as apotropaic is because it was diverting any energies that were malevolent or evil or not very nice essentially and so it would be like a decoy so the idea is is that if your witch bottle kind of exploded or broke or somehow someone got into it it's kind of something that you need to just sort of get rid of and redo obviously i have not done a video about disposing of spell remains in an ethical way but there are loads of videos about it it's really 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 important. I never ever dispose of anything like that into nature. You don't want to bury a jar because it's not biodegradable. You want to recycle the glass if you can. You may not wish to recycle it in that way, but you can wash it physically, cleanse it, cleanse it, cleanse it, cleanse it. You may not wish to use it again. You may wish to reuse it as your witch's bottle again if you cleanse it and that feels okay to you. If it doesn't, you may wish to just simply recycle it. And I would always try to reuse. But if something was particularly painful, for instance, 
I'm not judging at all, you know, there's certain things I will and won't do. I tend to err on the side of protection, cleansing, wards, etc. And if something penetrates and is unpleasant, I neutralize or return to sender or something like a binding in a freezer spell or a banishing is highly effective. But I'm not going to be judging. I think that in most cases you really don't have to be doing anything too harmful in order to get some away for you because you can also bless them and that can be a way to remove them from your life if you wanted to so it doesn't have to be baneful but you know I don't think that all baneful magic is necessarily malevolent magic or harmful magic so that's just something to consider and something for another video but so in order to create a witch's bottle you want to be able to obviously have all your items that cleansed and charged and imbue them with your intention that's really important speak words of intention, breathe, do all the things that you're going to do with this thing, make sure that it's charged, you don't want to take the lid off, you put the lid on, you want to seal it, I usually will have a candle on top and then I'll use some of the wax to seal it, seal it in, that's fine and dandy and then you hide it away somewhere, you're going to, some people put it at the front of their property, other people will bury it, I prefer not to, I have mine squirreled away in my home, it occasionally will need to be replaced but you will know when that is and you feel into it again as I said you need to follow your instinct follow your intuition it's not going to lie to you okay so just please please take that if nothing else from this video so we briefly touched on ways in which ancestors can sort of support and that's something that you can lean into if you have an ancestor altar you can definitely talk to your spirits pray to your spirits ancestors dearly departed loved ones etc for support in whatever it is that you're creating so that they can be part of whatever it is and of course working with deities as well again you would contact them in, in the way that you would do that you would honor them in the way that you would do that make offerings to them treat them in the way that you would do and we're not talking about deities in this video so there's just so many topics to cover and obviously I can't cover them all in one video but there are so many videos online and so many books that you can read I did mention salt bowls before which I think can be charged for protective measures but also for bringing in blessings etc so they kind of do dual action they can be popped in and around your home another thing that you can use for this that is more of a daily thing or a weekly thing perhaps is like a simmer pot that you can do or you can brew teas and things like that and you can brew you can make a decoction for instance and then use that in a bath obviously as long as it's safe bathed with whatever herbs it is you're making that decoction from i would avoid using any kind of baneful herbs or poisonous toxic herbs although you can connect to baneful plants toxic plants in spirit you know you can talk to them and it just is about spending time with the plant really allowing them to show themselves to you and to create a plant ally in that way and i would highly recommend that you start reading books by by Daniel A. Schultz, for instance, so Fenificium, 13 Pathways of Occult Herbalism. A great way in is The Poison Path Herbal by Kobe Michael as well, fantastic book. I've touched upon Working with the Dark Moon for some of these workings, and another book that would be really great for you to read is Of Blood and Bones by Kate Froehler, which I read last year, and I absolutely loved it. It's a fantastic, fantastic book. There's just so much you can go into there, and definitely utilizing things like Dark Moon to make your water, to make an oil, etc., can be really supportive for your protective protocol in your magic and your practice. I mentioned salt. I like to use the Cornish sea salt, but you may also wish to use other salts. So it's really, really nice to have some pink Himalayan salt, like for a self-love bath or whatever, but we're not talking about that right now. But if you have some witch's salt, I just make this myself because you can use ashes, especially if you're using ashes from a particular ritual that was invoking protective energies. That kind of ash from charcoal or ash from burning papers is perfect to use in your witch's salt. Create your own which is salt, black salt, that can be used for protective measures. And you can also use actual edible black salt as well, which you can buy from certain supermarkets. Like, it's a specialist thing, but you can use that within your kitchen witchery, if you wish. I talked a little bit about kitchen witchery, of course, and enchanting your coffee, your tea, any kind of brews you make, something that you can do. And it's very highly effective. It's quite simple, because it's all about your intention and setting it and to imbue it with, within what you're making. And it's all yours. It's complete. It's so creative. Again, I say simple, I don't mean it's like a rudimentary simple, but we're talking about a basic of witchcraft here as protection magic, but I think one of the most creative ways to work magic is utilizing herbs, plant spirits, connecting to plant spirits, and then creating beautiful food to serve out to people, to protect people, to bless people, to call in abundance and prosperity in your life. I think that's such a wonderful thing to do. And of course you can do this by using liquids 
that you imbibe, like tea, like wine, like beers, water even. I love to use some sigils for health and energy and things like that. And I like to have like a jasmine green tea from time to time and I'll use sigils within that. I'll imbue that with my intention for having a bit of a boost of energy if I need it. You know, I'm a coffee girl as well, like coffee through and through. You can reuse your coffee grounds and protection magic highly effective it's also great at speeding things up and bringing energy of course but you can utilize it for protection as well i talked briefly a bit about casting protective circles i think that has to be its own video because this video is already so long something slightly different which is treading the mill the compass round which is more of a traditional way of practicing it's got a slightly different intention behind it so i won't get into that now but obviously if you wanted to cast sacred space or use any of those means of protection within your spells and rituals, please do. And again, I did mention briefly the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. I highly recommend this. This is the Middle Pillar by Israel Regardi, the balance between mind and magic. So this is from the Golden Dawn by Sheik Cicero and Sandra Tabitha Cicero. Definitely good to have under your belt. And again, you can look into more occult kind of books like Donald Michael Craig's book to start with if you wish any of the books by Jason Miller kind of straddle that sorcerer, magician, witch. It's more occult in its approach, but still operative magic. This is fantastic. This is Utterly Wicked by Dorothy Morrison. I absolutely love her because she's got such a great sense of humour and her writing is so easy to just get absorbed in. It's really important as well, I think. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to go out there and curse lots of people or hex people. It's just really good to have an awareness of this stuff. But actually, there's a lot of protective measures and magic in here. This is definitely something that you need to be uh, aware of and to have read about. There's a saying that a witch who doesn't know how to curse doesn't know how to heal or it's along those lines and I think it's really important if you are going to be healing people or taking off curses you know uncrossing or removing these kinds of energies I think it's really important that you know the basics around the other stuff not necessarily saying you're going to do it but again hot topic not for today another book that I acquired at the end of last year this is a fantastic book so tiny there's so much in here this is by Rust of Nail and Prick of Thorn Theory and Practice of Effective Home Warding so this is something you definitely want to dig into there's so much in here there's stuff about emergency warding the sigils and symbols chimes and mobiles I had mobiles over my kids cops when they were first born you know when they were babies and that's something everyone has right but that's something so easy to charm for protection so this is really really interesting of course you can have other things as well you know like bells and things that jingle and not only are they beautiful and pretty and fun but they're also great protective elements so this is just a great book as well this is Althea Sebastiani and yeah I'd highly recommend this too I think I went over the main things I wanted to talk about. I am also just going to open this up to you and just say, you know, if you've got anything that you want to add that you utilize in your practice, I am all ears. I'm sure that others would also love to hear. There's just so many things that you can do because once you understand that the magic is within you and that you have the power and that you trust yourself implicitly to do this and to put that magic out there, there's so many places you can go with this and all you have to do is trust yourself, know yourself, just be aware of what you're doing. You need to be able to question yourself and you need to be able to look at the root causes of things and some people say that shadow work shouldn't be done without a mental health practitioner. I think yeah you need to do what's right for you and make sure you're safe but I do think that even if it's not necessarily shadow work you need to be getting to know yourself and doing the inner work okay let's call it that but you know I talk a lot about inner work and shadow work in my new and full moon forecast that I create for every new and full moon. I put full written up forecasts including all the planetary aspects and movements and how you can work with them in a forecast as well as things that you can do to support yourself during that time if it's particularly challenging, how you can lean into any potentially like benefic and supportive aspects, how you can work with trickier aspects as well. I include shadow work prompts, things to muse upon and consider, rituals and practices that you can engage with herbs and crystals that you can work with and a bespoke tarot reading for that moment as well that you can do for like a week leading up and a week afterwards and you can also then take those prompts and use them as shadow work prompts as well that's all included on Patreon and it's my second tier. I have two tiers now, so the first tier is support level with the Discord server, occasional Book of Shadows pages. The second tier is the Stars and the Moon and that includes the Moon forecasts. And I put my heart and soul into that really, it's, it means so much to me. But anyone supporting on there, so if you are interested, do go over and check that out. 
please do put anything below, any questions, comments, ideas, thoughts, anything I've forgotten, anything glaringly obvious that I've forgotten as well, because I'm so sure there's lots that I've forgotten. If you enjoyed it, leave me a like, a comment, subscribe if you're new and you haven't already subscribed, hit the bell notification, share with anyone who you think also would enjoy. Come over on Instagram, follow me there. I share a lot more like actually what's happening in the moment, what I'm working on, what I'm reading, tarot decks, what I'm doing in the woods, older things as well, working with herbs and stuff. There's so much on there that I include. I do have a TikTok account, but I don't tend to go on it. There's some older stuff about working with different plants and herbal allies. So if you're interested, you can go over and follow me on TikTok. Here as well, where I'm sharing lots of videos about magic and tarot and witchcraft and the occult and spirituality and paganism and tarot. And it's really fun to be here. And thank you so much for joining me for today. If you did make it to the end please leave me like a scaredy cat emoji if there is a scaredy cat emoji if not just a cat or a rose because a rose is really protective it's not just for love or self-love it's so protective fiercely fiercely protective thank you so much for joining me i hope that you are well and safe and looking after yourselves i look forward to seeing you again in another video really soon take care many blessings bye